Hi, I'm Mr. B. During this lab activity, I will explain how to use a Bunsen burner. Okay, this lab can be found on Schoology. It's called the Bunsen Burner Lab. The equipment needed is a Bunsen burner, a 400 milliliter beaker, matches, crucible tongs, a straight pen, and of course, safety goggles. So reading from the lab, we're asked to use your own paper to record the observations and data. Please do not write on this lab paper. Make sure that long hair is tied back and baggy sleeves are secured. Make sure you wear your safety goggles throughout the entire lab. Okay, now for the procedure. It says locate the parts of the Bunsen burner where we have the barrel, we have the air intake, and the gas intake. Then it says attach the burner hose to the gas jet in the center of the lab station. Make sure all hose connections are secure to avoid gas leakage. So I'm going to secure the hose that he get to the jet. And we're done. There's, it's snug. Okay, now it says, then it says light a match. Okay, turn on the gas to the burner. Then it says, practice lighting the burner by placing the match five to six inches above the burner, the barrel of the Bunsen burner, and slowly lowering the match to the barrel. Okay, let's try that. I'm going to turn on the gas. I'm going to light another match. And I'm going to hold it five to six inches above the barrel, lower it to the flame, and you can see that it works. Then it says each member of the lab group should practice lighting the burner. All right, so let's assume that there are four members in my group and all four of us have lit the burner successfully. Then it says with the burner lit, adjust the gas flow using the gas intake valve. Now the gas intake valve is on the bottom. It's called the spud. Okay? And observe the gas, observe the effect the gas flow has on the flame. All right, so making it really tight, you see the flame will go smaller, or the flame will go up, smaller, up. Okay, as I tighten the valve, the flame gets smaller. As I loosen the valve, the flame gets taller. Then it says record your observations in your data table. So over here is your data table. Now record your observations here. Then it says adjust the airflow of the Brunson burner until you see a distinct blue cone in the flame. Well, we have a distinct blue cone there, so we're already good with that part. Okay, this is the blue cone right here. It's the internal cone. Okay, when properly adjusted, the inner blue cone should be clearly visible and about two inches high. I think that's about two inches high, so um, this flame is good. Hold a straight pin with crucible tongs and place the sharp end of the pin in the three zones of the flames. So, crucible tongs here, pin here. I'm going to take the crucible tongs. First, I'm going to place it in what part? I'll place it in the, the base. The base is there. Then, it's got, then I'm going to place it on the tip of the inner cone. And you can see it's getting really red now, so that must be the hot part. So the hottest part of the flame so far is the tip of the inner cone, and then the tip of the outer cone. That's the outer cone. 
where it gets red again. But the tip of the outer cone is not as hot as the tip of the inner cone. What is the color of each portion of the flame? Well, that's barely visible blue, right? But the inner cone is a heavy blue. We can see it's really blue right there. We can actually call that, I don't know, uh, sky blue. But this up here is blue, but it's, it's hardly visible. How long does the pen need in each part of the flame to go red? I don't know. Let's see. Well, at the base, it takes a long time. A long time at the base. The inner cone uh, is red already. And the outer cone, that's pretty fast too. So it takes a very short amount of time for the inner cone and the outer cone to turn the pen red. But the base of the flame down here takes much longer. What does the, this information tell you about the temperature of each zone? Well, the temperature at the base is, is um, less than the outer cone here, which is less than the inner cone. So the hottest part of the fire, of the flame, is the inner cone. Then it says record your observations on the data table. The data table. Here. Here. Okay. Stick a pin. I've got to, I've got to turn the fire off. Stick a pin through the max stem as shown in the diagram. So I have a match here. I'm going to stick a pin through the match. Through the match. Okay, I got my pin through the match. The next step says, stick a straight pin through the, a match stem as shown in the diagram. With the burner lit, adjust the air and gas flow until you see a distinct blue in a cone. That's it right there. Then it says, without touching the burner or the controls, blow out the flame and quickly drop the stem of the match into the barrel of the burner like that. Okay, now bring another lighted match near the top of the burner and ignite the gas flowing from the burner. And as you can see, when I light the burner, it doesn't, the match doesn't uh, light in, uh, immediately. That's because the bottom of the flame is cooler than the top of the flame. And record your observations on this part right here, on the bottom. OK? If time permits, observe, observe your teacher as you demonstrate another difference between the burner flame and the orange flame. So, permits. Observe your teacher as they demonstrate another difference between the blue flame and the orange flame. What effect does the flame have on the outside of a test tube? Okay, so I'm going to light it again. That's the blue flame. So I'm going to place the test tube in the flame. And you can see that other than some condensation due to the increase in temperature, nothing really happens to the outside of the test tube. Okay? But when I lower the oxygen, the flame is going to change from a blue flame 
to a yellow flame. That's called a luminous, a luminous flame. Let's see what effect that has on the outside of a test tube. You can see the outside of the test tube is getting black because the gas is being used more inefficiently than with the blue flame. And it says, what effect does the orange flame have on the outside of the test tube? Well, it turns the test tube black with what's called soot. Which flame is better choice for the lab? Then clearly, clearly the blue flame is a better choice because this is an efficient flame. Okay, so that's pretty much how to use the Bunsen burner. Okay, on the bottom we have the spud. The spud controls the height of the flame. We have the air intake, which allows oxygen to get into the burner. The more oxygen it gets in, the hotter the flame. Gas intake tube. Okay, right here on the burner. All right, so hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, so now what you have to do is complete these questions at the bottom of the lab, and you're done. Okay? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.